I am back. So I don't always do videos talking about new species being revealed, but sometimes I hear about one that I just feel like it really needs to be talked about. And that was definitely the case with the recent discovery of an exceptionally large bird of prey found in southeastern Australia. And if there's one thing that I love as much as Xenarthrins, it's Pleistocene Australian megafauna. So let's not waste any time and get into the discovery of Dinatoitis gaffi and see where it fits into the landscape of the Ice Age outback. The discovery of this animal in many ways is similar to a story that I've heard several times before, where a new discovery is not actually made in the field, but in a museum collection where something has been misidentified or deemed too inconclusive to make a reliable identification. This actually happens more often than you might think. And in this case, the original specimen of this bird was found in the 1950s and 60s. But at the time, it was hard to tell exactly what they had beyond it just being some sort of fossil bird. But a second expedition to the same site where these fossils were found in 2021, along with pulling other remains from other collections uncovered across Victoria, New South Wales, and South Australia, yielded enough to come to the conclusion that they had a totally undescribed species on their hands. And from what they did have, it was clear that this was quite an impressive animal. So it was given the name Dinotoitis, which is an interesting name all things considered since it means powerful eagle. The reason why is because technically even though this bird is a raptor, it's not actually a true eagle. Phylogenetic analysis shows that this bird is actually closer related to old world vultures. But, more than likely, it still filled a very eagle-like role in the coastal forests of eastern Australia. One of the things that paleontologists look for when they're trying to figure out if an extinct bird of prey is an active predator or a scavenger is to look at the legs and feet. The feet of most vultures can grip tight enough to hold on to branches and things, but they're not adapted to grab struggling prey. This is something that all predatory raptors do. They normally have bigger talons and more robust legs because, honestly, these are their killing tools, even more so than their beak. And despite this animal's vulture ancestry, this bird was built to throttle mammals. It would have probably still scavenged too, then again, so do actual eagles. But these guys were every bit as much apex predators as any of the other monsters of the outback at this time joining the ranks of Megalania, Thylacaleo, Quincana, and the Saltwater Crocodile. No, I don't think that this bird was probably hunting full-grown diprotodon the size of a rhino. I don't know why, but for some reason that's always like the, the standard for what we think of when it comes to apex predators in Australia is hunting the biggest things, when in reality there was plenty of more modestly sized prey that they could have very well been able to feed on. It may have even been a danger to young Thylacaleo, or possibly even humans. But how did this thing stack up to other predatory birds around the world? Looking at the fossil evidence that we have of Dinotoitis, we're able to paint a picture of this creature and understand how it fit into its world. Australia during the Pleistocene was going through a dramatic amount of drying, but the east coast would have remained largely forested. This was the perfect habitat for a bird of prey that would have been filled by the large vulture with a 3 meter or 10 foot wingspan. And growing to this size and filling the niche of top avian predator would have put strain on other birds of prey, such as the Australian little eagle. Now, unlike Dinotoitis, the little eagle is extremely adaptive, calling most of mainland Australia and New Guinea home. And it probably avoided the giant vulture by actually preferring more open environments. Despite being a true eagle, this creature only maxes out at around the size of a peregrine falcon, which is why it's called the little eagle. And this adaptability would actually afford it even more opportunities as it spread across the South Pacific. Because, perhaps to get away from their killer vulture competitors, they eventually arrived on the island of New Zealand. And there, they would find a thriving ecosystem with an endless bounty of prey and no major predators to speak of. But that's a story for another time. 
because today we got to talk about this monster bird. Dinotoitis probably stayed on the eastern half of the continent to take advantage of the different kinds of large mammals that would have been more prevalent at the forest's edge. It's by no means the world record for the largest flying bird to ever live, but it absolutely takes the title for the largest flying bird in the land down under. And for this reason, it probably had a hand in the evolution of some other large predatory birds. In the end, due to the giant size of Dinotoitis, it probably relied heavily on the abundance of large mammal prey like Palarchestes and other marsupials, as well as dense forests to launch their attacks from. And with both of those resources in decline around 60,000 years ago, the great killer vulture would have likely struggled to survive. And thus, this amazing bird probably went extinct between 40 and 50,000 years ago. But the little eagle still remains to this day, spanning across the continent and surviving on much smaller prey. I hope you enjoyed this look into Australia's ancient past and the new discovery of the largest flying bird to ever call this continent home. And I also want to thank everyone for the well wishes and let you know that I am feeling much better and I'm looking forward to bringing you more content. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you giving it a like and a comment below about any other interesting discoveries that you would like to see me cover on this channel. Alright, that's all I have for now. Have a good one everybody. Also, holy crap, while I was editing this, I got my very first super thanks. So, wow, awesome. Thank you, Ben Lee.